Hey, Dr. Alan Christensen here, and I'm excited to give an update on resistant starch and talk about more food sources of that that you may not have thought about. So, in case you haven't heard, this is exciting stuff, and there's concerns about bad carbs, but some of the most healing foods you can imagine are the good carbs. So the bad thing about bad carbs is that they absorb really fast and they make your body work hard to juggle your blood sugar. So that gives a clue about what could be good about the good carbs. The good thing is that they absorb slowly, they're easy on your blood sugar, but also they feed this super important group of probiotics in the intestinal tract, especially this group called the anaerobic protective bacteria. They're ones that are not so much influenced by probiotic pills or other factors but resistant starch is fuel for them. So overall, this has the best of fiber and the best of carbohydrate. You know, fiber is good for your flora, but there's no nutrients from that. It's not digestible. Carbohydrate doesn't feed the flora, but it does give nutrients. Resistant starch gives a little bit of nutrient, but it's so slowly absorbed that it gives you seven to nine hours of stable, steady blood sugar. And energy and body weight, are really just all about your blood sugar being in that good range and not being high or low and not moving fast up or down. And resistant starch stays in that curve longer than any other known food. And here's how it works. Basically, starches have two main versions. There's, there's polysaccharides like amylopectin, which are highly branched, and there's also those like amylose, which are straight chains. So the long straight chain of amylose, because there's, it's a long single straight chain, it's hard to break down. Your body has to go like one bite at a time to where with the branched versions, you can go from many points at once. So resist resistant starch is such a long singular chain that you can only break it down in the large intestine. It's not small intestine insulin, it's large intestine good bacteria. So the benefit of that is it's making these short chain fatty acids that feed the good bacteria and lower inflammation and heal the intestinal tract. This includes buter butyrate, butyric acid, acetate, propionate, and these are all the benefits of cutting the cancer risk and reversing leaky gut. This also improves blood flow to the colon, helps you absorb nutrients better, even minerals. This also binds with many toxins. So what happens is that the modern diets can be, boy, as low as two to four grams of that per day but many traditional diets had 20 or 30 grams of resistant starch per day. Data shown that it's safe, um, all ages, pregnant, nursing, no problems. Can also lower triglyceride and HDL and lower the glycemic load of the whole meal in which it's involved. We've also seen that this stuff reduces inflammatory bowel diseases. It improves insulin sensitivities. It helps you recover from infections faster, makes you less apt to have digestive problems body composition and immune response. So it works both as the prebiotic, but also as a symbiotic. So I talked about the prebiotic role. The symbiotic role is really to where it's helping the bacteria interact better amongst themselves. So different bacterium will cooperate and encourage the growth of helpful neighbors under the influence of resistant starch. So not only do you get more good ones, but it makes the good ones better and do even more dramatic things. So where do we get this? Well, there's different types, and there's one called RS1, and that type is bound up and protected. So we get that from whole grains, seeds, legumes, especially things like raw oats. Then we've got RS2, which is the ungelatinized versions. We'll see this in like raw potatoes, green bananas, green bananas, bananas and potatoes don't rhyme. <laughs> raw potatoes and green bananas but also the higher amylose starches. Then we've got RS3, which is the retrograde starch. That comes about when you cook and cool something, like potatoes or sushi rice or some breads. Then we've got many synthesized forms of RS, RS4, 5, 6, and, and others as well. So ideally, we'd get about 20 to 30, 35 grams per day, and it's better to find it with food and have it with food sources. Now, you wanna raise the dose of this gradually, this is so powerful for your good bacteria. If you do a lot at once, you could have some gas or bloating. And not the end of the world, but take your time and have a smooth ride at it. No reason to have discomfort. It's the best way in the world to get your stomach just flatter and not, not bloated, is to gradually phase in resistant starch. So what are some of the best food sources? Uncooked oats, really high in that. 
cooked and cooled potatoes. And a cool trick here is the more times they're cooked and cooled, the higher in RS they get. Plantains are great sources. These are kind of like bananas, but you've really got to cook them. And the same thing, they can be cooled after cooking as well. Beans, as far as a category, are the biggest food category that are densest in resistant starch. All types have that. Some of the big hitters are especially the white beans, like navy, northern, and cannellinis. Peas are also very rich sources. Azuki beans, I love azuki beans. These are the densest food source of magnesium as well, so a great thing to include. Kidney beans, lentils, black beans. Here's a weird one that's actually really high, but puffed wheat cereal. The puffing process forms more amylose. So not so much endorsing it per se with the wheat concerns for some people, but really high in resistant starch. Garbanzo beans, banana peels, green bananas, also high in this. Lima beans, pumpernickel bread, believe it or not. Yams, pearl barley, and then also rye bread. Now mind you, pumpernickel and rye, the older versions of those are quite different than the versions you'll find in the stores. You can find some that are made solely from rye flour with or without pumpernickel, and those can be good sources as well. So many great foods contain that, radical health benefits, and things that were very prevalent in traditional diets. Of course, we've made our shake to give a full 12,000 milligrams of resistant starch per serving. So that alone can get you pretty much at the target. And two of those per day for a four-week period, you're well at a major target and huge benefits with gut repair, detox, weight loss, better metabolism. Dr. Christensen here. Take great care of yourself. We'll see you again really soon. Bye-bye.